in the latter part of 2007, early 2008, um, there was a lady that worked in my office and uh, she was a civilian, civilian member, and she would look after investigations and files involving unidentified bodies, unidentified body parts. It was something that she basically just worked off the side of her desk. So I come into my office one day and I find about a dozen boxes. And the first thing I think to myself is, what the fuck? Where did all these boxes come from? I got a phone call from her and she told me everything that was about. And I started to go through the material. And uh, I noticed some large gaps in multiple investigations, um, evidence collection, follow-up. And I started to work on these files, and I eventually developed it into a full-time unit. It became the RCMP's first unidentified human remains unit in its history. And uh, since 2007, 2008, that is what I've been immersed in for the, grand, the larger majority of my career. Well, did you, uh, have you worked on any high-profile cases that people might know about? I have. Um, I think one of the more prominent ones out here in British Columbia was the floating feet. Well, hikers in British Columbia, Canada found a dismembered foot inside of a running shoe while they were walking on a beach. Police in the Pacific Northwest are scratching their heads after a human foot in a running shoe washed up on shore. Thing is, it's not the first time it's happened. It's not the second or even the third time that it's happened. Investigators are making some progress in a mystery that's been turning up on the shores of Western Canada and the U.S. That seems to be one that was known throughout different places in the world. Um, here in BC, for a number of years, there was uh, shoes that happened to be floating up on beaches. Um, floating up in beaches, shoes have done that for a long, long time. And then one person looked in a shoe and they found human remains. Things after that started to continue. There, used, there would be more floating up. There'd be one here, one there. And uh, I worked on that one from the opening of the case and wound up bringing it to a successful conclusion. Um, I received different types of information from different types of people. I had a, a psychic that had sent me a fax at that time saying that where these feet were showing up wasn't random. It was a message to me from the killer. Um, in the end, basically, it wound up to be unfortunate circumstances that Majority of them were people that had jumped off one of the many main lower mainland bridges. And when a body suicide. goes into the water, yeah, it was suicide. When a body goes into the water, it'll get caught in the currents. And as it starts to decompose, it'll come up. Um, and now running shoes are very, very buoyant. So that running shoe is going to start to go up. It's going to start to tug. And it's going to naturally disarticulate the foot, bring it to the surface, and wind up showing up on a beach somewhere. It was, it was a big tizzy because the media latched onto it, thinking that there was a serial killer at work chopping off feet and throwing them into the water. Nearly all of them have been found in running shoes, leaving one magazine to ask if the Reebok Ripper was on the loose. It was nothing like that. It was simple, natural disarticulation yeah. and uh, unfortunate victims of suicide. So in terms of career, was that your peak or did you move on to something else or what are you doing now? What's going on? That was my peak. Um, I spent 14 years in that. I'm on the doorstep of retirement now. I'll be um, probably retiring in about four or five months. Yeah. Um, that was a legacy that I'd created that was at the forefront of every major advance in missing persons and unidentified body investigations for the past decade. Um, I was fortunate to have a number of collaborators and teammates and we put together things that the RCMP and the rest of the policing world has never seen before. Um, I've been called as a subject matter expert in multiple investigations, the, cre the creation of Canada's National DNA Data Bank, the creation of a $10 million analytical system out of Ottawa, uh, um, Canada's first provincial dental data bank, and uh, a number of different systems put in place to help bring some peace to the families of missing persons and unidentified bodies. Some of the situations I had been, I'd, I'd suffered some, in some injuries. I'd been shot at, I'd been stabbed, I'd been beat up, a number of different things. So yeah, yeah, there's definitely times when I was scared. <laughs>